Hello, I'm Past Paper Guy. I'm going to be going through this AS Physics Paper 1. It's AQA uh, 2016. I'm going to be going through it question by question, explaining where the answers come from, rather than just looking at a mark scheme. So hopefully um, it will help you understand the questions a bit better. So onwards and upwards then. Question 1. The figure shows a jet engine. The air enters at A before it's heated inside and it leaves B much higher speed. Lots of students, when they first saw this exam, were a bit confused by this because they'd never met this particular type of jet engine before, or any jet engine, and so they panicked. But you're going to come across different case studies which you won't have met, and um, you've just got to deal with them. So it doesn't matter what diagram is here, what matters is the underlying physics, and that's what they're trying to get at. Can you interpret the physics in different situations? So state what happens to the momentum of the air as it passes through the engine. Well, if it enters here slow, it goes out there fast, then the momentum has increased. So the momentum has increased. Okay. Explain using an appropriate law of motion why the air exerts force on the engine in the forwards direction. Right. So if the momentum increases, then that means there's been a change of momentum, so that means there must have been a force on the air. So as the momentum of the air increases, there must be a force on the air from the engine backwards. Okay, and that's Newton's second law. So Newton's second law to explain that. If the momentum increases, Newton's second law states that force is rate of change of momentum. So if we increase the momentum of the air going backwards, then there must have been a force on the air backwards. So if there's a force on the air going backwards, there must be an equal and opposite force on the engine itself going forwards. So there must also be an equal and opposite force on the engine going forwards. And that is Newton's third law. Okay, so Newton's second law force is a rate of change of momentum. Newton's third law is that if body A exerts a force on body B, then body B exerts an equal and opposite force back on body A. Okay. So question one, part three. In one second, a mass of 210 kilograms of air enters A. The speed of the air increases by 570 meters per second as it passes through the engine. Calculate the force. So we need the definition of force which is rate of change of momentum. So that's momentum divided by T to get the rate of change of it. So the mass that's going through is 210 times by the velocity, which is 570 divided by the time. Well, this is one second. So time is one there. So take your calculator, 210 times by 570 gives you that number there. That's 119700. Two sig figs, two sig figs, that's right, our answer to two sig figs. 120000 newtons to SF. The equation that we're using there is located on the formula sheet. And it's there. It's Newton's second law. Okay. When the aircraft lands, its jet engines exert a decelerating force on the aircraft by making use of these deflector plates which move in. They cause the air leaving the engines to be deflected at an angle to the direction the aircraft um, that's traveling as shown. So the air instead of going out that way is now coming this way in the same direction of the motion of aircraft. The speed of the air leaving B is the same as the speed 
of the deflected air. Explain why the momentum of the air still changes. Well, the momentum of the here is mass times by velocity. It's not mass times by speed. And velocity is a vector, and it takes into account the direction of the air. So when the air hits the plate, it changes direction. Velocity has therefore changed. I should put the velocity has therefore changed. Um, uh, and so has the momentum because they are both vector quantities. Okay, so although the speed hasn't changed, the velocity has because the direction has changed. Here, the total horizontal decelerating force on the deflect plates of the jet engines is this. Calculate the deceleration of the aircraft. This is very easy. We're just using Newton's second law, the other expression of it here, F equals MA. So F is equal to MA. So A is equal to F divided by M. So A is equal to, well, the force is 190 kilonewtons, so times 10 to the 3, divided by the mass, which is 7.0 times 10 to the 4. So let's put that in the calculator. And we get A is equal to 2.71428, dot, dot, dot. So that's two sig figs, that's two sig figs. So write this is two sig figs as well. There we go. The aircraft on the runway is traveling at a speed of 68 meters per second with deflector plates acting. Calculate the distance the aircraft travels along the runway when it comes to rest. You may assume that the decelerating force remains constant. So that means the deceleration will remain constant. This is a Suveta question. So you go S U V A T. Write in what we know. So S is what we're trying to find out. U is the initial velocity, that's 68 meters per second. V is the final velocity. It doesn't say that. until it comes to rest. There we go. So the final velocity is zero. The acceleration is this. Now we've got to be careful. That was a deceleration. So we're slowing down. So we need to put a minus in here. So it's minus 2.71428 dot dot dot. And the time, we don't care about the time. So we need to pick one of the Suvad equations now, which are located in this area of the formula sheet here. And the one that we don't care about is time, so we need to pick the one without time. So we need to pick that one there. So v squared equal to u squared plus 2as. So v squared is 0 is equal to u squared 68 squared plus 2 times by. And then the acceleration is minus 2.714, etc times by the distance, which is s, we don't know. All right, so we're going to solve this now. This is negative here, so if we bring it over to the other side, it'll become positive. So we can have 2 times by 2.714, etc. s is equal to 68 squared. So s is equal to 68 squared divided by, move all of that down there, 2 times by 2.714. Okay, so we need 68 squared. And then I want to divide that by 2 times by, and the last thing I worked out, which is still stored in my calculator, is the answer. So I get that. And 
let's think about sig figs. That's two sig figs. That's two, two, two. So we want two sig figs. So that's 850 meters to two SF. So just why in practice the decelerating force provided by the defective plates may not remain constant. Well, if you think about this, then the force provided is the, due in part to the velocity, but also it's in part to the mass, the amount of air that's entering the engine. As the engine slows down, less air will enter the engine, so less mass of air will enter the engine. So that will be smaller there. So you need to write that down. As the aircraft slows down, then the volume and therefore mass of air entering the engine will reduce, so the force will reduce. Okay, and that is the end of question one.